Somebody rolled a critical success at this book sale. <laughs> Greetings and welcome back to another magical and mysterious episode of the podcast. I'm your host as always, DMJ. With us today is another book haul. Yes, I know, way back here. If I'm going to reference this video now, early on in the video, because chances are there's going to be a lot of references back to it, so we don't have to worry about pointing and, and all that for the rest of the video. Anywho, the last time I went to this book sale, which was this enormous warehouse... Uh, in the middle of nowhere. You wouldn't expect it to be a giant book sale in the middle of nowhere in a warehouse that looks like it should be like a car repair thing. Actually, I think it might have been like a mill at some point or a place that did, uh, what do you call that when you take fabric and make it? Make it, bind it, bind it, and make it. Whatever that is. Actually, speaking of binding and making, we got a book in here that's really interesting that's coming up. I saved it a little towards the bottom. But some of these are my favorite books. Some of these I bought them because all hardcover books were $2, and all regular books were $1. So I'm going to start with the first one right now because we've got 16 books. The last time I went, I believe it was nine books that I got. So I almost doubled what I got the last time I was there. So a lot of this is interesting. A lot of this we're going to piss through real quick. One of the ones that we're going to piss through real quick is this one here, The Halls of Ardenval, Volume 2. Now, I don't have Volume 1, so I feel like any I'm a continuity guy. Like, if I start a show like Star Trek, I've never watched Star Trek. I always say I hate Star Trek, but there's some things that appeal about it to me. I would have to start with the original series, the very first episode, watch everything in order up until the current whatever is playing at this time. This is in great shape. Now, I want to point something else out, too, before we go too far. All of these books start with a 2, which usually, I believe, indicates that the ISBN is a European barcode. I'd have to check. I'll put it on the screen if I can look it up and find it, like a little chart for you guys, a little chart. You guys love charts, D&D and all that. I don't know much about this. This is the first book that I saw, and I was like, oh, they got D&D stuff, because a lot Last time I was surprised because the night before I expected to show up and find everything I'd ever sold and, and find it again and, and replace my collection, but that didn't happen. But I found a lot of cool stuff. Anywho, the reason why I buy these books, for example, this one right here is A, it was $2, and B, I think that it's all about the ideas that you can garner from these. I do a, a, a homebrew campaign that I've been running for about 30 years, if you guys didn't know. And some of the, my best ideas have just spawned from something I read. I just wrote the end of my campaign. If you want to go back and watch this episode, it's not super exciting because I can't talk about the end of my campaign because my players would watch. Anywho, it's the inspiration that you can draw from these, the ideas you get from them. The art itself sometimes is just enough to, um, to draw you and give you an idea. Now, something that is up with some of these, I don't think this one is that bad. I actually think this one is really good. Uh, the binding is very wacky on a bunch of these two. So I'm wondering if these are possibly, if they're European or not European, I wonder if they are print-on-demand books. And if they don't come off right, then they just donate them or get rid of them or however they write them off with taxes. Anyway, this is a Viking-type campaign. It made me think of my friend Chris, who was on the show recently. If you want to go back and watch that episode, it was a collective mind of DMs that I know, uh, or at least three DMs, myself included. I could have grabbed a few more, but I, I didn't. So I'm going to put this down. i got to start another stack because this is heavy. I'm going to show you the next two just as a grouping here. I'm showing you these because this is the uh, werewolf, I believe, and this is vampire related. This is a companion. Now, I'm not sure. I remember playing GURPS back in the day, and they had, like, companion books, companion one, companion two, and you could use a whole different, like, it, the rule set for GURPS is really neat. It's different. It only uses a D6, which I know in some weird cases turns people off. But, uh... Anywho, this is Vampire, this was Werewolf. These were things that I, weren't gonna, I wasn't going to leave for $2. Now, these aren't things that I owned at any point, and I've never actually, I've played in a, a Werewolf. No, I played in, a, I think it was just the White Wolf kind of world. I played a Vampire, and other people played other things, Werewolves and such. But this is, I've always drawn inspiration from them because I love the undead, and I love uh, lycanthropy and vampirism and using it to the extent of my game. I wrote a book once called Morning Star like morning like you're in morning yeah it's stupid i know but uh let me put these down hang on i don't know what my point was about writing a book at one point but it had something to do with those oh the main character becomes infected early on in the book it's not you know spoiler alert or anything like that but he moving on through the book he learns to deal with it cope with it and how he becomes the person he eventually became from originally being an assassin real bad assassin uh if you're into that i mean you can check it out i'll try to put a link in the comments below i'm not going to say don't buy my shit 
If you want to buy my shit, buy my shit. It's cheap, too. I think it's like two bucks, three bucks on Kindle. Ah, The Menagerie. This is the second book I found, and this is when I started to realize something's not quite right here. Like, there's definitely, like, a a puckering in the center of this book. There's weird, like, puckering on the binding. These are fun words to say. Use them in your campaigns. Find a way to use the word puckering in your your next game. Then let me know in the comments below how you used it. That would be pretty fun, huh? A little challenge for you guys. All right, some stuff. I figured by Menagerie it was going to have something to do with either monsters, which it does appear to be. The great thing about this, too, is I wish I could show you a little bit better, but all of this is in full color. Like, the printing is really nice. The binding on this one is not that bad compared to some of them. Uh, This is definitely one I just want to dig into. And a lot of these, of course, I was very excited to see that there was, you know, 5th edition or Roll20, I mean, D20, or, you know, the system was right on it. Some of these necessarily weren't. Some of them were. A lot of these were kickstarters not all of them mention it but i looked up a few of them found out that they had started as kickstarters and all had done really well i really need to put together an athalia campaign an entire book i even my friend mike by the way i want to give a shout out to my friend mike i meant to give him a shout out for the video that talks about progressing a DD party too quickly if you want to check that one out that's all due to him and i totally blanked i forgot to mention him in the video so if you're into DD content every wednesday i try to release a, a new video it doesn't always happen just because life but um yeah this is a neat one great art and uh i'm gonna dig into that and see if i can find something that and the reason why the reason why is because like the party gets they're they're all we've all been playing D 10 20 30 years at this point 40 years in some cases and the fact of the matter is is every and you know, every animal every monster you run across in a game you know you've run across before in another game not maybe not every monster but you, maybe you're a dm and you're researching like you know a lot of the monsters you know a lot of spells if you've been playing D long enough y- y- and you see it coming you know how to react and so to take these books and especially to pull like monsters out of them and throw them into the game of course that takes a little bit work on your part it's not like i can just download this into my game i have to create it as a monster and then import it so on and so forth but sometimes it's just worth it to be like what the hell is that i've never seen that in any monster manual before and and, and, mm, i hate to say it because i love art i'm an artist i love to create things what's my point behind all that i don't know well if i get back to it i'll get back to it sometimes it just goes away i think it was a really good point though Something about creating. I know it had something to do with monsters, custom monsters, and throwing something in a party that never seemed... Oh, AI. I hate to say it, but AI is a great tool. If you uh, chat with meta AI, you can just ask for me as a drow warrior, and it'll be like, hey, I need to take your picture, and if you're into giving up your picture, you, you take three pictures... And then everything, every time you type me as or like however you want to describe it, just make sure you're describing yourself. It'll use your model on whatever they're doing. And so as a DM, that's really handy, especially for like things like, I don't know, this thumbnail. <laughs> like that's, I mean, I'm a beautiful man, but I'm not that beautiful. So let's grab these next two books. Uh, actually, the next, the last one, this one and the next one are going to be groupings of two because they are all part of the series. And I was interested uh, with these two because it's called Weird Frontiers. And it was also, if I'm not mistaken, that's 60 bucks originally. Binding on these, as you can see, it is definitely warped. It's like, a, you know, you could probably put this in the water and float on it. Go surfing down the Nile or something like that. Oh, it's just, I have no idea why I bought these books. I'm not going to lie to you. I like the name of them, and I like that there was two parts of it. So you've got the actual, mag- whatever the hell a magic tome is, and then you get the core book. So, And also, as a dungeon master who uses, like, 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons, you can get away with pretty much three books. You don't really need anything else. Those three books, and you can run a D&D game. Technically, probably get away with one book, but I don't, maybe two. Now I'm just saying numbers. Okay, so I'm going to put these aside. It's something I will dig into. I like the fact that the spines match up, too. I wish I had the whole series so that I could display them one day in my great grand D&D room that in my head is going to be amazing. And these two are also just on a whim type deal. I know they take place within, oh God, I feel like it may not be actually White Wolf's world, but this one is Mortal Remains and the other one is When the Moon Hangs Low. Uh, And they're all about becoming, somehow becoming an agent that 
goes out and kills, or not an agent, but a hunter that goes out and kills uh, supernatural creatures. It almost reminded me of Supernatural, the show. It's a gothic action role-playing game. Um, this one, okay, no, is it this one? Later on, there's one that it's just completely off its binding. It's not off the binding, but it's just glued, like, way too low. Notable people. Yeah, it seems like a really interesting kind of dark uh, gothic style type game and I, I dig that every now and again i liked playing call of cthulhu and, and stuff like that so there's definitely a size thing going on here too maybe that's what i was picking up on yeah and this is the one the moral remains is right to the top whereas down here you got a gap you got a hole this i find a lot too with these books they're banged up you don't want to hear about the books and it's got a whole like write up report of the you know you're playing the hunter and you're going to go and research it and so on and so forth so i thought um if in not inspiration maybe run these one day or at least try to figure out a little bit more of what they are what system they use and so on and so forth and as fucked up as this one is and it is fucked up uh arcane crimes division i loved Loved, loved the artwork on the artwork on the cover of the book. It's really good. I like it a lot. Um, and so I just I didn't care about the shape of it. The name of whatever the system is. I didn't even read the back until right now, to be completely honest, which is a lighthearted buddy cop style action fantasy city bursting with magic and thick with scheming villains and ruthless scoundrels. A complete tabletop role playing game for two or more players. Uh, I have no idea, but I just love the art so much. Once again, completely full color it, this these must be like they must be getting them from somewhere that's just like it's just not right and this is definitely not right but what an interesting kind of concept for a role-playing game because when i think of role-playing games i usually don't think about stuff like this i might think about sci-fi but mostly you know i lean on fantasy so this is something i can't wait to dig into and maybe sit down with, with a few friends and, and try to figure it out so this binding is really messed up, too. Uh, this one, you can kind of see where it's warped like this. But how do you write a system? Like I was going to say earlier, I can you can play with three books. This is like one book. And let's see, the total page count is 727 pages. Like, I feel like that's a lot to know. Maybe it's because it includes the three books. Or like I said earlier, this could be a situation where it's a print on demand. But once again, the thing that just jumped out at me was the art. And it was full color. And it's, uh, I believe this is roll uh, uh, D20. No, Pathfinder, which I found interesting. To the stars and beyond. So it's more of a, like a sci-fi thing. And I've been looking into that. What's the, it's not Pathfinder, Starfinder, Starcraft. I don't know what the hell it's called. But it's the sci-fi version of Pathfinder. And this kind of reminded me of that. And I thought for $2, I might at least be able to get a lot of really neat ideas about this. And I think I might be able to fix this. I actually know someone who fixes books. So maybe I can get them to do it. I don't know. Maybe I'll never do that. We say it, but we never do it. It's, it's those things in life where you're like, oh, yeah, I got to do this, or I want to do this, or blah, blah, blah. Do those things, because you never know when that last moment's going to come for you. I don't mean to get dark here in the middle of the episode, but if you are enjoying this episode as uh, you may have enjoyed other episodes, would you please consider subscribing to the channel? That would be a huge help a Rooney for me. Thank you so much. And Forbidden Caverns of... Or Archaea? Archaea? Anywho, it's a fantasy, a classic fantasy mega dungeon by Greg Gillespie. Gillespie, 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 Gillespie. And it is exactly what it says it is. There's just a bunch of dungeon maps in here. There must be like, I don't know, 100 levels to this map or something, just loaded with monsters. It is very classic in nature. Um, and I might just steal some of the maps out of these because sometimes it's nice to just do that. Also, if you've never heard of Dungeon Alchemist, this is a video I created a very long time ago. It's the very first video I did for, well, not for them, but about them. And it is an amazing tool. If you play VTTs and you're not using Dungeon Alchemist, I think you're out of your mind it's worth every penny i think it goes on sale for 30 or 35 but it's an ai ai geez ai kind of uh, map making software so you can create dungeons castles uh you know ruins whatever you want and it'll fill everything in if you don't like it you can hit a button refresh if you don't like it you can take out everything you want exchange everything you want it's really worth it um they are not a sponsor but if they want to sponsor i would not turn them down Okay, now we're getting to the one. This is the one that I, you might want to be sitting down for this one. If you're warm, maybe get a fan, put a fan on for a second here. Because this one is called Kinks and Cantrips. 
I could not leave this just because it was the weirdest thing I think I've ever seen. And I don't mean to knock you if you're into kinks and cantrips. Like, go for it. I'm all all about that. You can you can live that life. Live any life you want. But um, just the idea that I've never read anything quite like this. I know back in the day, Dungeons & Dragons put out the book of Vile Darkness, I think it was. And that kind of played up some of this. And there was big warnings. And they finally pulled it off the shelves and so on and so forth. But... Two dollars for a, you know probably seven hundred and some odd. No, is that eight hundred? I can't read. I can't read. The, I apparently I can't talk either. However, uh, yeah, loaded with monsters and it's just its own thing. And it's definitely uh, it, I did look it up. It's basically about implementing sex, BDSM, you know, mass all the all the sexual kinks that you're into. They're probably going to be in here and it helps you kind of integrate it into the game. But I don't know why you need like over, you know, seven or eight hundred pages for that. But if you do, you do. So there was the, that was the really fun one that I thought was just like, I can't leave that. That is the craziest thing like I've ever seen for me, at least. Like, I always think it's weird when you're playing with a group of friends and one of them is like, hey, I'm going to go hit the whorehouse or something. You're like, whoa, whoa. I'm not role playing that. I don't care. Like we can talk about what happened afterwards. And I tell you in my games, you never want to do that because I will punish you because I'm not playing some, well, I won't get into it. <laughs> Exploring Eberron. I know very little about them. I know at one point you could submit your world to become the next D and D world. And Eberron was the one that was chosen. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, but I'm almost 192% correct. <laughs> you can't be that correct. No one could be that correct. But uh, it was an introduction to it. I don't know what this is exactly because I don't feel like this is the official book. This is KeithBaker.com. Keith Baker Presents. So it looks like something that Keith Baker put together. However, it's it's interesting and it's got, you know, all the information you'd ever want, I guess, to, to learn about eventually running an Eberron campaign and maybe actually picking up some of the... Um, uh, I don't want to say legit because this is legit. It's just not too legit. So, you know, the official uh, canon stuff. Yeah, anybody who sees this next one notices the cover is definitely completely different than anything else we've seen before. And some of you with really good, no, you probably can't see from here, will find that the word Strahd is on the cover. So I saw this and I was looking at it going, One Night Strahd. And I'm like, there's no way that can mean what I think it means. And lo and behold, it is. What this is, is they try to condense a 200-hour campaign down into 12 hours into a book that somehow is like twice the size of the original. Hang on. I grabbed both of them just for the hell of it. So we got the Curse of Stride and we got Ravenloft here. Or the, uh, you know, the guide to live. Yeah. No, this is bigger than both of those books combined. It's insane. How can you cram a... You don't even need this. This Let's take this out because that's not part of this. This is basically taking this and like... What? This is, this is 200 hours and this is 12 hours. I didn't get it. Either way... It was Ravenloft, and I love Ravenloft, and I love Strahd, and I love everything um, everything in the world. I just love everything in the world. <laughs> but I thought it'd be kind of cool, maybe like little scenarios that you could run in your games here and there. Maybe they get sucked out of their world and just briefly into Ravenloft. And Or what's the world, actually? Is it called? Yeah, it's called Ravenloft, but it's Barovia is the continent, I believe. So I wasn't going to leave this for two $2 for hardcover. Okay, this is a boring one, but it's it's boring in the way that, like, it's just another monster manual, Monsters and Myths. But I really liked the way it was laid out. Beautiful art, absolutely stunning art, uh, interesting monsters. And this is what I was talking about earlier, how you can basically, you know, take a monster from this, and no one is really going to know what the hell it is unless somebody else has this. The only thing that was wrong with this is that the, the binding is, or the printing on the binding was reversed, so it should have been the other way. Uh, and I don't care. I, it's going to look weird on the shelf, but I can always put it upside down if it really freaks me out too much. So this book includes 100 new monsters, 13 new magic objects, 8 new races, and much more. So all that, maybe uh, even use some of the races to implement into your worlds. Like, I've been using a lot as a DM of half, like, breed races. Not, not like, half elven, half dwarven, but, like, half moose or half, like, you know how a minotaur or a centaur is either, you know, half a horse or half a bull. Like, I, I like the idea idea of taking like bison or moose and like turning them in and it seems like uh turning them into the cops i mean turning them into like races playable races in my world and it seems like they try to do that a little bit with that um i can't humblewood i think it was and i, I love it because i've been playing i've played two different races that came out of that the jirboa jirbean 
and actually, I don't know if the other one came out of it. It's the the bunny one, not the yeah, the bunny one. What's the but herring gone? And this last book is as cool as the other side of the pillow. Let me tell you, the book of collected rumors, a collection of over two hundred rumors, each designed as inspiration for game masters of any edition. It is just a neat thing. Intruders spotted in the city harbor. So this is a rumor. It's like you come into town. It's one of those nights where you're like, shit, I am not prepared. You could just come up and take one of these rumors and kind of plant it at the tavern or inn that they're staying at. Have them talk. And you got everything you basically need here to get it started. From there, you're going to have to do a little bit of improving, I think. But there are some character names. There are some facts. There are some faults, uh, true and false is here. So it'll tell you if the rumor is true or if it's false and what is true about it, what's false about it. The Manticore's Den. It's just how neat is that? Like as a DM that's just or even like a night that you're just hanging out with new people that want to get into D&D and you're like, I don't have a game ready. I could I could grab a module. But this is just so much fun. Like it could just take up a whole night of role playing and that's my favorite part of Dungeons and Dragons is the role playing like sure it's fun combat's fun and dungeon crawling is amazing but when it comes down to it I really want to play a character and I want my friends to play their characters and I want us to play characters together and that's what D&D is all about to me and I hope you guys have loved uh, this episode just as much as I've loved making it and if you guys are loving the content that I'm creating as much as I love creating the content that you guys are watching would you please consider liking commenting subscribing sharing and then hitting that little bell icon because it'll let you know every time I put out a new video. Don't forget to make somebody smile today and make yourself a better person tomorrow than you were today tomorrow. Let's make the world spin a little bit happier and a little bit geekier all together as one, singing and dancing in the sun and the rain, my brothers and sisters. Live life to the fullest and love every moment of it because you just never know when that last moment's going to come for you. However, never live in fear of that moment. Always live in love, but never let your inner child die. Ooh take care of yourselves. Take care of one another and take care of those around you who cannot take care of themselves, for they are the ones that need it the most. And if no one has told you today that they love you, the vodcast loves you very much, just the way you are. All right, guys, do no harm. I'm Jason Oliveira. This is the vodcast, and I'll catch you guys a little bit further on down the road to 50. Take care, my friends, and happy adventuring. Don't go to sleep with a catch it in your pocket. <laughs>